This is an all too common scene. What is pretty clear is something in the modern diet is a problem. It's making us fat, depressed and demented. Now modern diets are very different from traditional diets and depending on your bias you can pick your poison. It can be blamed on too much sugar, particularly high fructose corn syrup, or too much fat. The fat that is usually blamed is saturated fat of animal origin. The other problem, too little fiber. Into the mix you can add gluten, food additives, micronutrient imbalances, heavy metals, pesticides, GMOs, microplastics, you name it. The one thing that is pretty clear is whatever it is, and I suspect it is more than one thing, it's associated with highly processed foods. Join us for this episode of Better Body Chemistry TV as we dive deep into the fats of processed foods. And no, in case you're wondering, it's not saturated fat. Better Body Chemistry TV is brought to you by Dr. Sandy, a scientist turned gremlin buster, helping you battle sugar gremlins, heifer lumps, and other health horribles through better body chemistry. Remember, small things can make a big difference to your health. Now, several fats are associated with processed food. Probably the biggest is soybean oil. To put some numbers on this, there's been a thousand-fold increase in the consumption of soybean oil in the 20th century. The reason for soybean oil's popularity? It's relatively cheap. And as an added bonus, it lowers cholesterol levels. The principal way soybean oil does this is through competition. Seed oils contain plant versions of cholesterol, collectively referred to as phytosterols. These guys use the same transporter as cholesterol to get into the body. When there's lots of phytosterols in a meal, fewer cholesterol molecules get absorbed. Less cholesterol in translates to less cholesterol circulating. Yay! Of course, it also means more phytosterols circulating, and these have their own health issues, but I'll save that for another day. The point is, despite their cholesterol benefits, soybean oils have been shown to be obesogenic and diabetogenic in rodent systems. The ingredient that has been fingered is linoleic acid. It's an unsaturated fatty acid, which among other things changes how cells talk to one another. If you're interested in learning more, this video explains it in more detail. You can find the link below. The problem with linoleic acid hasn't completely gone unnoticed. There have been attempts to decrease the linoleic acid levels through genetic engineering. One such product is Plenish. It's a soybean oil which is low in linoleic acid and high in oleic acid. Oleic acid is the fatty acid that dominates olive oil. So what happens when you subtract linoleic acid? Well, a team of researchers based in Riverside, California, decided to test out the health benefits of plenish relative to a traditional soybean oil and another plant-based oil, coconut oil. Now, instead of focusing on lipid levels, these guys opted to look at brain effects, reasoning that, well, the brain ultimately runs the show. They focused their attention on the hypothalamus. This is the body-brain relay station. It conveys the body's nutritional status to the brain and then issues instructions from the brain to the body about what to do. Since <laughs> chopping out bits of brain in humans would be unethical, they opted to do their experiments in male mice of the C57BL6N clan, feeding them fat-enriched diets. Five dietary options were studied. There was a low-fat version, which had 13.4% of energy coming from fat. The rest were all high-fat versions, with 40% of calories coming from fat. To avoid confounders, the team only looked at plant fats. Now, the fats included combinations of coconut oil, soybean oil, and plenish. Plus, there was a phytosterol plus coconut oil version. In terms of the fatty acid profiles, linoleic acid dominates in the soybean oil, oleic acid in the plenish, with lauric acid, a saturated fatty acid, dominating in the coconut oil. So, what happened? Well, the mice on the low fat diet were the skinniest and these little guys were eating like horses they had to their chow had 25 percent fiber in it so it was not high in calories 
the high fat diet caused the mice to be heavier but it was much of a muchness with maybe one exception the animals on the traditional soybean oil diet that is the high linoleic acid diet were marginally worse in terms of sugar control baseline was taken to be the mice on the low fat diet eating a diet rich in coconut oil had no impact on glucose levels go coconut oil those on both versions of the soybean showed impaired glucose tolerance while the coconut oil supplemented with phytosterols mice ended up having the best sugar levels in terms of the relay station gene transcription in the hypothalamus showed two patterns here is a closer version of that heat map of hypothalamic gene expression RNA sequence at 24 weeks. The color bar indicates the level of gene expression relative to the whole data. The pattern for coconut oil closely matched the pattern seen in mice following a low fat diet. The soybean oil patterns were quite different. In terms of the numbers, the low linoleic acid version was marginally better with 101 genes expressing differently from the low-fat version. In the case of the high linoleic acid soybean oil, 158 genes were different. Of course, it's hard to say whether gene expression changes are good or bad, but they do hint that the animal's body chemistry has changed and that these changes go beyond being heavier. One gene expression change that stood out like a sore thumb was that of oxytocin. It was significantly up in the brain and significantly up in the plasma. Now, officially, oxytocin is the love hormone. Not the PG-rated love, but the love that bonds people, particularly a mom to her baby. Oxytocin imbalances are associated with obesity and diabetes, but they're also seen in other scourges of modern living, depression and autism. Could diets high in soybean oil be part of this story? Well, maybe, but it's not a linoleic issue. The fail for plenish in this study suggests linoleic acid is not the bad guy in soybean oil. But there's definitely something rotten in soybean oil. So if you want to create better body chemistry, steer clear of soybean oil. It's not an oil you're likely to use in your kitchen, but it is the oil that dominates in processed foods. Think foods that come in boxes and packets. There's also a high probability that it will be in foods you encounter when you eat at a restaurant. Now, not all restaurants use it, so ask what's being used and use this as a guide when choosing where to eat out. Minimizing your consumption of soybean oil is going to create better body chemistry and better health. Interested in discovering more ways to create better body chemistry or need a little help getting your body chemistry on track? Visit our website at www.betterbodychemistry.com. Browse our library or enroll in one of our courses or programs. The advice is simple to follow and based on real science, not hype. And know someone who's worried about saturated fat? Share this video with them so that they know the fat of processed food is a bigger issue. And if this is your first time here, be sure to subscribe to our channel so you catch future episodes of Better Body Chemistry TV. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time. Remember, small things can make a big difference to your health.